Several tutorials back, I talked about creating collections that don't have duplicate elements using sets. Sets were made available as a part of ES6. There is another collection in ES6 that lets us more easily create collections of key value pairs. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about maps. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. It has always been possible to create key value pairs using objects. So why would you want to change? Well, maps are JavaScript objects that eliminate some of the difficulties with key value pairs. Let's take a look at them. So let me jump to Sublime. Now, to create a map in JavaScript, you use the map constructor. So you need to use the new keyword. And it would look like this. I'm going to create a collection. Set that equal to new map. That sets up a map for you. Now, when you're creating an object and you're setting up the properties of that object, the key value pairs, you can use the dot syntax. You can use a number of other ways. In a map, however, you use the set method like this. We type in the map, then dot set. And then we pass in the key and the value like that. Now, one of the advantages with map is you can use keys that you could not use with objects. For example, we could use an object as the key to a key value pair, something like this. I'm just going to grab the window object and use that. We also can use other data as well. So with maps, we are not limited on what can be used as a key, like we are with objects. So that is one advantage. If you ever run into a situation where you're using key value pairs, but you need to use something as the key that is not allowed in an object. But more important, maps can be easier to work with, I think. So let's start looking at how we work with this map that we've set up. We have three sets of key value pairs now. Now, to access a key value pair is using the get method. So something like this. Let's go ahead and get the one we set up with the window object. All right, let's stop at that point and just take a look at what we are retrieving. I'll refresh and then open the console. And we can see that we get the 200 that was associated with the window object as a key value pair. Right here. So we were able to get that back. Now, one of the nice things that makes maps easier to work with is you can always find out how many key value pairs you have. Let's take a look at that. That is done with the size property. So like this. Now that should give us three. And there we go. We have three key value pairs that we're working with inside of this collection. Now you can also remove a key value pair using the delete method. So let's say we wanted to remove the window key value pair again. Go ahead and save that. Well, one second. Let's add another size so that we can see it. Now we refresh. And I don't know why I entered console there instead of the name of the collection. Obviously, we want to delete from the collection. That's what we're doing. So the collection dot delete, and then we specify which key we want to delete. Let me save that. There we go. Now we have two left because we removed one of those using delete. Now, something else you can do with a map is you can clear all of the key value pairs. So if we do 
collection.clear, that will remove all of them. Let's just do check the size again of COL of collection. And now we're down to zero. So that cleared everything out. Now, when you're setting up a collection, you want to be able to work with the values usually. Sometimes you may, may want to work with the keys, but most of the time you're wanting to work with the values. Let me comment these out so we still have all of our key value pairs within this collection. Then let's take a look at how we can see all of the values. And this is done using the values method. Like that. That will display all the values. Now we can also take a look at all of the keys. We can use the key method, keys method. So let's look at those two. So here are our values. It returns an iterator. We've got all the values in there. And then we also have all the keys, as you can see. Now, the most common way in working with values or keys, if you need to work with the keys, is using a loop. Now, in ES6, a for of loop was introduced that allows you to work easily with these. Let's take a look at that. So we simply declare a variable. And right now, I'm going to let that variable equal be equal to each of the key value pairs. So I do that by simply saying of and then I specify the map that I want to cycle through. And then let's just console.log v and see what we get as we cycle through that collection. So save that, refresh, and here we get. As you can see, we get each key value pair. That's what displays to us. And it returns it as an array. So the key is the first element. The value is the second element. And that's what we're seeing there. Now, that may be useful at times, but normally you want to only work with the values. So we can change that loop simply by getting dot values we just talked about, returning the values. And as I said before, that creates an iterator. And so the for of loop will allow us to go through that. So let's take a look at that. There we go. Now we're getting the actual values. And you could, of course, do the same thing if you wanted the keys. We just change this to keys. Then when we refresh, we can see there's the first key. The window object is the second key. The entire object is returned because that's what we use as a key. And then five was also used as a key. So if you need to work with key value pairs, you might find it easier to use maps. And we've gone through the different methods that allow you to work with maps, how to access the values, how to access the keys, how to set and get those, how to determine the size, We've looked at all of that, and you may find that easier than working with an object if you need to manage key value pairs. Now, before we are done here, please hit the like button. It can help others on YouTube find this tutorial. Also, hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website, allthingsjavascript.com, for full courses or a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.